teaching of foreign language. Uh, along the years of teaching English, I employed the uh, use, uh, or sorry, I employed many computer programs in the teaching of English grammar, vocabulary, and uh, pronunciation. My doctorate project was centered on uh, the use of uh, speech analysis software for the teaching of English uh, intonation. In this regard, I intend today to present some pedagogical uh, perspectives on the application of uh, computer assisted language learning program. Um, in the teaching of uh, foreign language in general and in the teaching of English pronunciation in particular. So interdisciplinary research refers to the integration of data perspectives and tools from different disciplines in order to foster the understanding of the problem and to provide solutions that extend the scope of one discipline or single <coughs> domain of research perspectives. So interdisciplinary research means the uh, combination of tools and techniques from one discipline into another in order to uh, find possible solutions to a particular uh, problem. It means to extend that discipline and look and have a look at the problem from a different uh, angle. Well, um, this talk aims to raise awareness towards the collaboration between computer programmers uh, or designers and uh, linguists or language uh, teachers, uh, to be more specific, foreign language uh, teachers. Well, let me uh, try to identify what does it mean computer assisted language learning or uh, call program. We can refer to it also as computer based language learning program. It is when learners pick up a language in a certain context through, with, and around computer technology. So, whenever you are trying to learn a language, you make use of any technology. We call this a computer based language learning program. One of those that we use uh, commonly in our daily life is what we call the desktop uh, computer. Also, there is the uh, electronic chip-driven technology and the software. There is the laptops, or sorry, there are the laptops, peripherals like scanners, digital cameras, piano keyboards, printers, personal digital assistants, in addition to software movie makers and word processors. Now, let's uh, explain the connection between call and language pedagogy. COM program is designed to respect the process of how human languages are learned as confirmed by second language acquisition theory as well. Let's take the case of French language. French language in Algeria is considered uh, second language. Uh, English language in Algeria is considered third language. We can refer to it as a foreign language. So when you, the uh, computer uh, programmers and designers, uh, try to build a computer program, uh, it has uh, to go hand in hand with the process the human language is acquired or is learned. So some of those features involve uh, learners, the language, the context, the, the tools, the tasks, activities, etc. So when you build a computer program, you have to bear in mind that uh, the learner's uh, way of thinking, the learner's motivation, interest uh, can have an influence on uh, the use of that uh, program. Also, what is the status of that language? Is it the first language like uh, Arabic, for instance, Fosca? Is it the second language like French? Is it a third language like English? Because the way we learn a second language is different from the way we learn a third language. So you need, you, the computer programmers, you need to take this into account. Also, the context in which the uh, exercises or activities take place, uh, you have uh, to take it into consideration. Now, we're going to have a look at the early call uh, programs. Uh, first of all, we have the program logic for automatic teaching operations. Uh, Plato. It was first initiated in 1960. Uh, it was like the pioneer, pioneering uh, call program. It was a kind of email system that is used with, uh, that is used by 
uh, users to communicate and also to make a kind of announcements among teachers and students. We can say that this program uh, enabled the user to save records of uh, his uh, activities. However, this program was not uh, found very effective in the development of uh, speech or production and comprehension, but uh, it was very effective in the learning of vocabulary and the grammar. We all know uh, microcomputers uh, were invented in 1973, but used only in 1980s uh, for the teaching and learning of uh, language. <coughs> Uh, international email tandem network project. The learners communicate via internet in which the students can discuss different topics at a bilingual uh, forum. So the international email tandem network, uh, the students or the users, they meet in a bilingual forum. They try to exchange language and culture with the use of uh, two uh, languages. <coughs> Now let's have a look at the models and approaches to software interface design. We all know the World Wide Web based or compact disk read only memory based instruction. Uh, this model um, is designed to meet the goal of improving the linguistic and paralinguistic abilities. When we talk about linguistics, it means uh, the learning of vocabulary, of structure, etc. Paralinguistic are uh, some abilities that extend the language. For instance, when you change uh, your voice or the quality of, the, of your voice, uh, whenever you pronounce a particular sentence, the meaning also uh, changes. So uh, this basically was the interest of WWW. Uh, also, we have the natural language user uh, interface. This one uh, was concerned by the clauses, phrases, and it has control over modifying, selecting, and creating data in a software application. Now, user <coughs> interface, it is a channel of communication uh, between the computer functional elements and the user. So, we can, you can uh, have a look at the figure below. Uh, you can see that uh, the program that you design and the user uh, has to interact together to ensure the success of the operation. So uh, the program provides the output and the user, uh, on the other hand, provides uh, the input. What is in between the information flow is what we call the user interface design. We have also another approach, a computer application-centered design approach. Uh, how the computer stores, stores sorry, and processes information rather than on how the users operate. So the interest of this approach is how the computer software functions but, and neglecting the role played by the user. Uh, here the information provided in this approach uh, is centered on the options, parameters and commands, machine codes, etc. Another approach which contradicts with the previous one is user-centered design approach. In here, the users store and process the information. The focus is on the human factor and the design and human-computer interaction parameters. So this approach pays more attention to the role played by uh, the learner. We have designer-centered approach. Here, the designer, after building a computer program, uh, he fails to test its usability, its applicability, so he relies on his own intuition, which is, from a pedagogical point of view, uh, something not acceptable, because what is easy for the computer programmer may not be considered easy uh, from uh, the point of view of the user, because it may be considered complex, maybe the user cannot make use of the functions of the computer. So any computer designer must uh, ask himself or herself, is the design user-centric? It means the conceptual model of the designer and the mental model of the user must be combined together to create the interface which works hand-in-hand -hand with the program functionality and the system's inherent structure. Another approach is called the craft approach, finding the features that are appropriate to fit the software design circumstances and intended goals depending on views of human 
manufacturers, experts and interface designers experience. So the craft approach actually uh, is based on uh, collecting information from both sides, from the experts dealing with human factors and also the interface uh, designers. The enhanced software engineering approach, this one is based on what we call the waterfall model in which the development of the uh, computer program uh, has a uh, flow download. You can <coughs> observe this uh, figure. So it starts first with the requirements specifications, then the design, then the implementation, then integration, then testing or validation, installation and finally the maintenance. So this is what we call the waterfall model. Now the technologist uh, approach uh, here uh, pays more attention to the management system of user interface and some of the features of the computer program are extracted from uh, the software user himself. Now, let's have a look at the language learning theories uh, that are used for software interface uh, design. So, the combination of language learning theories, it means how the language is learned, with the interface uh, design uh, is a way to uh, develop the learner's proficiency level. What kind of proficiency? It means his ability in speaking that language, either English, French, or any other language. So some of those theories, uh, like Skinner's behaviorist uh, theory, software drills and practices are based on Skinner's principle of reinforcement and programmed instruction in order to help the students to memorize information <coughs> through stimulus response media. So some of the games, for instance, and drills and practices that you build in computer program actually are based on Skinner's behaviorist theory of stimulus response. It means you provide uh, uh, something and the uh, user uh, acts toward uh, this, this thing and at the end you provide, for instance, reinforcement, either positive or negative. You mean by reinforcement a kind of if, if the uh, user uh, succeeded in finding the answer, you provide, for instance, a kind of reward. If he fails, you provide a kind of uh, punishment. Information uh, sorry, uh, yes, processing theory. This one uh, treats the mind as a computer, which leads to the development of the artificial uh, intelligence uh, application. And this uh, improves the computer software design, which stimulates the human behavior and thinking. Also, the software practices uh, are used to guide the students through the learning process of encoding and storing the newly acquired uh, information. Some of computer programs that are intended for the teaching and learning of a particular language are based on some principles of game events. Uh, the first principle, when you design a program, you need first to make sure to gain the learner's uh, attention. If your uh, program is not uh, interesting, the learner is not going to use it. Uh, the learner is informed about the lesson objective. First, you have to indicate what is the purpose, what is the aim behind taking this lesson, whether it is the learning of vocabulary, of grammar, of pronunciation, etc. Prerequisite stimulation recall is that you need to make a kind of refresh or reminder of what uh, has been learned before, before starting a new unit or a new lesson. We have also the presentation of the stimulus materials, provide learning guidance. The students they or the users, they need to find some instructions in that program to be able to use it. Uh, elicit uh, performance, provide feedback, performance assessment, and enhance transfer and retention. So some computer programs, uh, they made use of, uh, let's say, corrective feedback in which they provide some answer whether uh, or some let's say uh, feedback about the quality of the answer is it correct is it is it wrong and of course after finishing any uh, lesson uh, the user uh, needs to test himself by taking a quiz for instance 
we have approaches to design instruction here, planning the lesson objectives by or through the identification of instructional activities to be realized through the internet of computer uh, software. So when we teach a foreign language, we sometimes as teachers we rely on the textbook, but we encourage the use of technology, so we tend to ask the students either to uh, use the internet or to answer an activity or a task on uh, the internet, like we create a kind of a quiz or a test online that they can take, or they can find this test on the computer program. The constructivist learning theory, here uh, the program or the software um, let's say, encourages the learner to get involved in the learning study and uh, tries himself to find a solution to uh, the problem. We have Vygotsky's contribution. Here, Vygotsky, he contributed with the Visual Tools logo, the visual reality and the graphic samples and uh, experiences. The Cognition and Technology group here uh, they connected technology with, uh, be, with the construct, uh, constructivism learning as a discovery to provide instructions by presenting it in video disc based scenario. I don't know if you know about the game uh, with very problem solving series in which, in which you watch some videos and you try to solve some uh, problems using communication, reasoning, etc. like mathematical problems, uh, science problems, uh, etc. Finally, we have Gardner's multiple intelligence theory. Here, um, we seek the beneficial use of a particular multimedia software and how it can be developed by assigning particular roles to the students depending on their type of intelligence. So, the type of the assigned exercise or activity to the student depends on his IQ. So, we cannot judge the student for his failure if his IQ, uh, IQ sorry, is, uh, is low. Now, I'm going to get uh, more specific uh, here about the use of computer programs for the teaching of uh, English intonation. There are two types, actually, of computer programs that we use for the teaching of English intonation. The first type is called computer-aided pronunciation program. With this kind of program, you provide a training on the uh, English segmentals or vowels and consonants and suprasegmentals, intonation, stress and rhythm. An example of CAP program, a computer-aided pronunciation program, is Pronunciation Power. It was first invented in 1995. I used this program for years in the teaching of phonetics, in the teaching of uh, segmentals mainly. So, what this program offers, uh, it provides animated motion charts to present the articulated nature of English segmentals plus drills on speaking and listening and the analysis of sounds in waveforms. So the first figure here, uh, it uh, provides, um, it's, it's a kind of a drill or an activity. Um, what you see here at, uh, at the top here is a sound, the je sound in English. This one is a type of uh, exercise that we have chosen. So here you can see that there are some functions here, like when you click here, you can listen to the pronunciation. Some instructions here are provided. Uh, these kind of arrows uh, have uh, significance, have a meaning. Okay. And in here, the, the user can record his own voice, can listen to it, and can save it. Okay. Of course, there, there are some, uh, there is some, uh, let's say, uh, um, let's say, weak points about the use of this program because it does not provide feedback. When you record your own voice, uh, the program doesn't tell you whether your pronunciation is correct or wrong. Okay. Here, what you see here is what we call the waveform. The sound that you, that you produce, there is a computer program that transforms it into this image. We call it a waveform. This is a pronunciation of the consonant of the uh, vowel sound, uh, long E. 
This is the native speaker's pronunciation, and this is the uh, the non-native speaker or the Algerian speaker pronunciation. Now, in here you see it's uh, a kind of uh, what we call presentation, animated and motion presentation. In here I could not bring a uh, video recording for it. So in here we see uh, a side view of, uh, your, of the face. Here is the tongue, the nose, the lips, the incisors, etc. So normally on the program it moves so it shows how the sound is produced. In here we see that the program provides a description of the organs, or what we call in phonetics, the articulators, that we use to pronounce a particular sound. And in here, all the instructions or and feedback is provided about uh, the characteristics of the produced sound. Another type of core programs that are used for the teaching and learning of pronunciation is speech analysis programs. They are categorized into speech recognition programs, speech synthesis, and speech analysis. So speech recognition program, it has to do with the ASR, or automatic speech recognition, that refers to recognizing human speech via computer analysis tools. So these kind of programs recognize or can tell whether uh, or can make a difference between the human speech and other noises. Speech uh, synthesis uh, program, these generate or collect the artificial speech si signals. It means the sound that you produce, this kind of a program, generates it, collects it in the form of a signal. Then we have speech analysis programs. These divide those speech signals into par uh, parts uh, to be uh, analyzed later into sound intensities and frequencies. So this kind of programs usually are studied in the field of acoustic phonetics and maybe uh, uh, researchers in physics, they have more knowledge uh, about it. Now, some early programs that were used for the teaching of pronunciation, we have the early ASR systems. They were uh, designed only to provide information about the matching patterns. It means when you produce that sound, uh, the program says whether your sound matches or it doesn't match the native speaker's pronunciation. It doesn't provide a lot of information. The recent ASR systems, however, are more intelligent. Uh, they made use of the hidden micro, ma, Markov uh, model. They uh, actually they store the uh, native speaker's speech and whenever a sound is produced, they try to provide a match and non-match uh, of that uh, sound with uh, what is stored or with the database. We have busy pitch software hardware, we have computer speech lab. Uh, these two actually provide what we call a real time display of uh, the pitch. Now, I am talking about the pitch, but many of you don't have an idea what this is, right? Right? <laughs> So, what is the pitch exactly? Now, when you speak, when you speak, you rise your voice. When you speak, you can make your voice louder. So, this is what we mean by pitch. So, people or the researchers in phonetics or in physics, they study the qualities of the voice. You may ask the question, why this is important? Well, it is important because it has uh, an influence on the meaning of, uh, of the language that you are speaking. For instance, you meet uh, your friend uh, in the morning, uh, let me say it in Arabic maybe, um, you ask your friend, uh, and he says, he has two ways to say this, Lebes, Lebes, right? There are two different ways. The first one says that he's not okay, you're going to tell him, Right? Second one, you understand the best, it means he is okay, right? So technically, 
this kind of, uh, I mean, la base, it, it does not really reflect what, what he or she wants to say, okay? So, this program speech analyzer uh, software here analyzes uh, a sentence, okay? Sorry. Uh, analyzes a sentence into what we call here a waveform and a pitch curve. So this is how your speech, this is how your sentence looks like when you speak. So this one in dark, it is the pronunciation of the native speaker, and this one in orange, it is the pronunciation of us, the uh, Algerians. So this one is what we call the pitch. So the pitch rises, then falls. This is how we speak. Now, other programs that were used in speech analysis uh, field of study are uh, Wave, Surfer, Wasp, Pratt, Audacity, Tell Me More, etc. All those programs uh, can provide what we call the audio-visual uh, feedback. It means they present visually the sound that is produced and can also provide uh, information about the characteristics uh, of that sound. Well, finally, I reached the conclusion. So, I, can, I, um, I want to conclude this talk by saying that the collaboration is identified in terms of software designer consistency with language or second language principles, pedagogies, and teaching methodology, which means that uh, you computer designers, whenever you want to build a computer program for the learning of a language, so please, uh, try to collaborate with the linguists or the language teachers because they can provide you with uh, some information about how the language is learned, uh, about what raises the, the uh, students' uh, interest, what motivates them the most, and uh, how the information also uh, from a pedagogical point of view can be presented. So this is the end. Uh, of my talk. Thank you for listening and uh, I hope you have learned something out of it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. 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 for the presentation. Uh, uh, Les, 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 les
on le introduit le français en troisième langue. L'anglais peut-être en donc l'influence de, de, de ça sur ça. Parce que bon, là on est à l'université et on voit les conséquences de ça. La non-maîtrise du vocabulaire français, de, de la. Est-ce que quelqu'un a est-ce qu'il y a une influence de, le fait de mettre en trois dans l'anglais oui. Est-ce que c'est pas trop court Est-ce que c'est pas trop tard donc, ce n'est pas très spécialiste parce que vous êtes spécialiste, parce que vous avez quelque chose. Je veux une réponse scientifique, je suis idéologique. Uh, 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 how to develop the English pronunciation? 
Okay, there are two phases in here. First phase is the perception. Second phase is the production. The first phase, perception. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Uh, sorry, can you repeat again? Maybe you try to improve your pronunciation. You mean at what age? Well, uh, well, I started learning English um, not at a very early age, but you, you can say that I developed it at uh, when I was a little bit older, 18 years old, 19, 20 years old. So it doesn't, uh, it, it has nothing, to, uh, well, it's true that, uh, I mean, from a pedagogical point of view, that when you learn a language at a very early age, you develop better pronunciation. But it can be applied to older learners if we provide the context, if we provide the motivation, and if the learner, he or she, uh, takes uh, the right path. The right path is that I developed first my discrimination. It means I started with the perception of sounds. I listened a lot. I was, uh, I was like uh, influenced by uh, the English songs when I was younger. So I developed my listening skill. Then I started watching movies, listening to radio, uh, listening to audiobooks, uh, etc. So I tried to imitate imitate the sounds, imitate the words, when, and when I have chosen English uh, as a major, I decided to develop my skill. So today we have access uh, to videos on YouTube, to movies, uh, so there is no need to live uh, in an English country or in the US to develop our pronunciation. Of course, you may think that my pronunciation is, uh, is good, maybe, but if there is a native speaker, he's going to feel that I mispronounce some vowels. I maybe I do not use the correct intonation, so he can tell this. But we, uh, as a teacher of English, uh, we the linguists, we always focus on whether the speech is understood or not. We do not pay too much attention to the pronunciation as long as the message can get across. That's it. You're welcome.